Tell me if this scenario sounds familiar. It's late at night and you wanna practice and you wanna jam out, but everybody in your place is asleep and you don't wanna wake anybody up. How about this one? You're away from the studio and an idea comes to you and you wanna capture it while the inspiration is still fresh, but there's nothing around to record with. Well, there's a new product from Boss which will solve both these problems and so much more. This is the Boss Katana Go. Good day, friends. Thank you for joining me today on this video. My name is Justin Waterfield. I work here in Toronto at the Bloor Street Long & McQuaid store. Uh, please like and subscribe if you dig what we're doing here. We really appreciate it. So today we are talking about the Boss Katana Go. Now, what exactly is this little black box of joy I got here? Well, it's two things. One, it's a headphone slash practice amplifier. It has an internal uh, rechargeable battery. It has Bluetooth input. Uh, it has all sorts of uh, uh, amp models and effects models from the Boss Katana line. Makes it really, really easy to dial in a sound and just get practicing or jamming. The other side of it is that it's a recording interface. It has a USB-C port here at the top and that's used for charging the unit when you got it plugged into like a cell phone charger or something. But you can also connect this to a, a computer or a tablet or a phone. This thing is uh, USB class compliant, so it doesn't need any drivers. You just plug it in and it'll show up as a recording interface in whatever device you plug it into. And that lets you record guitar and or bass on the go, which is so immensely useful to have uh, a sound engine this powerful in your pocket essentially, and you just pop it in, you plug it into whatever with single cable and that's it. And then you can capture your ideas right then and there. This Boss Katana Go uses an app called the Tone Studio, which you can download through uh, the Google uh, Play Store or the App Store if you're on Apple. And that's how you control all the parameters of the sound engine, the amplifiers and the effects. What it also lets you do is it lets you leverage the cloud to share patches. So any patches you design on here, you can upload them to your uh, Boss Tone Studio account and you can download those exact patches on a Boss Katana amplifier, bass or guitar. So for example, if you're already a Boss Katana user, you can upload your patches from the amp and use them right here or vice versa. So, so useful. Here's another scenario to throw at you. You have all your, you know, your patches designed on your amp and whatever. Say you go traveling, right? You go, uh, you know, off to Europe on a tour or something. You can download those same patches into your little practice amp here or like recording interface, like I said, or download it into another Katana that you've say hired for backline, right? It's so, so immensely useful and it kind of smells like a bit of an ecosystem going on with Boss, which is, uh, which is kind of cool to see. Now the Tone Studio app is surprisingly flexible. We have all 10 amplifiers and 60 effects from the Boss Katana line. And like I said, this is compatible with just about all of them, uh, including the base, uh, Katana base models. The other thing that I'm going to touch on a little bit later is the flexible routings. So I'm sure a lot of us have played with the Katana amps so we know how good they sound. But there's a lot more going on under the hood, which I only discovered by playing with this guy, believe it or not. There's a lot more that you can access in software than you can in the hardware. And that's especially important for something like the Boss Katana Go. Uh, this is a pretty simple unit. It's got a big volume control here on the front. It has a little screen to read out uh, your, your patch names and sort of what's going on with the unit. 
On the side, we have these three buttons, A, B, and C. These are for calling up your patches. It has a little jog wheel so you can switch banks. It has a tuner function built in, very useful. And on the other side, it has the Bluetooth connection button, which is self-explanatory, but it also has this stage feel button. This is a really key feature of the Katana Go, and I'm gonna to touch on this a little bit later in the video. So the main question that is gonna be asked is, who exactly is this thing for? And I think there's two main types of people uh, that are gonna find a lot of use for the Katana Go. The first is people who cannot play their guitar or bass loud. Um, I mean, let's face it, rock and roll is built on loud guitars, right? And loud instruments. We've all been to concerts where we got stacks of amps and they're all just roaring in your face. And we've all been to jam sessions where we're jamming with our buddies and we're cranking up the amps. But the reality is that a lot more of us these days are living in basements and condos and apartments, and we have neighbors on top and below and off to the side that we have to consider. A lot of us have families, right? Little kids or you know, spouses or significant others, partners, roommates that we have to consider who may not want to listen to our wailing away as awesome as we think we are, right? We got to be considerate these days. And that's where this comes in. It gets you all the sound of rock guitar or bass or whatever it is that you're after and it gives it to you in such a small useful package um, for practicing any time right you're not going to wake anybody up using this thing the other uh, potential customer i can see for this is somebody who wants a really simple amp simulator doesn't want a whole lot of muss and fuss and tweaking this and tweaking that and hooking this up to and getting that in your computer. No, 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 none of that. You just plug it in USB-C into your Chromebook or your laptop or your iPad or whatever it is, and you just record with the tones that you have. That's it. Nice and simple. So how do we use this thing? Well, for this video, I brought a bit of a different guitar out than my usual. This is my Gibson Firebird which is mostly stock, uh, apart from some replacement Firebird, vintage Firebird pickups by DiMarzio. So the Katana Go has a uh, quarter inch jack just built right into it there. And that literally plugs into the output jack on your guitar and power it on and away you go. For the purposes of this video, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be hooking it up to an eighth inch TRS, so like a headphone cable, and I'm gonna hook that into the headphone port uh, on the Katana. Now, this is normally where you would connect your wired headphones. It's worth noting that you can't connect wireless earbuds to this thing. It has to be wired headphones. Studio headphones, earbuds, anything like that, as long as it has a wire with the little mini connector that you can use. So again, for the purpose of the video, I'm going out of this basically straight into the camera. All the sounds you hear out of the guitar and the bass today are coming from the Katana Go. So, we have basically 10 banks of uh, available patches to choose from, and each bank contains three patches, or memories, as Boss calls them. And there's buttons for them here on the side. There's A, there's B, and there's C. And if you flip to bank two, you get A, B, C, bank three, A, B, C, and so on and so forth. Now, this Katana Go, because it's so small and minimalist in its, uh, in its buttons and its layout and interface, this thing really needs the Tone Studio app to be able to get the most out of it. So if you go on the App Store or Google Play, just download it to your phone. I got it on my phone here and let's see what this looks like. So this is essentially what you're gonna see uh, when you log in and you get this whole thing connected. First, it's gonna take you to the amplifier page. This is where you're gonna set up your basic tone. So this dial right here should look very familiar to anybody who has uh, played or used a Boss Katana amp before. You can basically choose all the different amps that are available. You have your variation switch, which gives you an alternate voicing, your gain, your volume. On the next page here, we have the equalizer, which is your bass, middle, treble, presence, and cabinet resonance. You have vintage, modern, 
and deep for the cab resonance. That's basically it for the amplifier side of things. Super simple to get started. Uh, this, consider this the platform of your tone. This is what you're going to add spice to with all of the effects, which are in this next tab over here. Now, there's a lot going on here. I'm gonna make this as uh, easy to follow as possible. So these are all the different virtual pedals that you can stomp on to add to your tone. BST would be like boost, right? So things like uh, treble boosters or overdrives or distortions or fuzzes, anything that is gonna boost your sound into the amp. And inside here, we have just a ton of stuff available. We have clean boost, mid boost, treble boost, we have mild overdrives, uh, what else we have? Distortions all the way into fuzzes down below. And take a look at these names for a second, right? So you have, you know, the blues drive, which is obviously modeled on Boss's own blues driver. We have the turbo overdrive. We have, uh, you know, like the HM2, we have the metal core. These are all Boss pedals, but check this out. We have a tube screamer. We have, uh, you know, a rat, we have a governor, we have a muff fuzz. It's really, really cool that Boss chose to implement and model effects from other manufacturers. I really like the fact that they're not trying to tie you into their own signature sounds necessarily. They want you to be able to paint with as many colors in your toolbox as possible. And I think that's really, really cool and really noble of them uh, to be doing that. Next up here in the modulation slot, this is a bit of a misnomer um, because what you get under here in terms of the available effects is pretty vast. You get modulation as expected, so chorus, phaser, flanger, univibe, all that good stuff. And then you get down into here with compressors, limiters, you have auto was, you have parametric EQs, graphic EQs, we have uh, acoustic simulators, we have a, a wave synth for <laughs> some reason, we got an octave, we've got a harmonizer, we've got all sorts of different effects. And this is very much the same for both the uh, modulation slot and the effects slot. These are both the same, so you can have two modulation pedals going at once. You can have two compressors going at once. You can have uh, an EQ and a compressor or a modulation and a compressor after it. You can do a lot of different things. It gives you two identical slots to put whatever you want in there. Nicely done. Then we move on to the delay setting and you get two of them, delay and delay two and you can choose from a bunch of different models here. There's the digital, there's a stereo, there's tape echo, there's reverse, there's the model of the SDE 3000, very, very nice. And you get two of those, you can set them up uh, with um, like different, uh, different intervals for the repeats and get some like really cool effects going on that way. We've got the reverb and a bunch of models here, plate, hall, spring, all sorts of stuff. Now, I should pause here and say that a lot of these effects that we've been looking at through these pages have two separate pages of uh, settings that you can tweak. So for example, on the reverb, you have your usual time and level and pre-delay and whatever, direct mix. You have your EQ, so you can EQ the sound of the reverb in isolation of the core tone that you're working with. And then you have density uh, control and the color control on the next page. So you actually get like six parameters per page, up to six parameters per page of stuff to tweak. So a lot more settings than you would find on, for example, like a Boss BD2 Blues Driver. So if we head back to that for a second and we select the Blues Driver, so here we get a bottom control. So that's how much bottom end is being added by the blues driver model. And then we have an effect level uh, and um, a direct mix. So we can like parallel process and put our dry signal in with the wet signal. These are features that you don't get on Boss's individual pedals, but it's great that they added that extra functionality here in the app. It just makes this whole thing so, so cool. Moving on, 
we have a solo section, which looks to be a separate EQ and a level boost for when you want to take uh, a solo. Like if you'd rather save your BST or overdrive slot for like a, a, a drive pedal or fuzz or something, and you don't want that necessarily boosting your level, you can come over here and use this as your solo boost. Then we have a contour setting. This basically shapes the overall flavor of your sound. Um, three different uh, mid characters that you can have, four different types and frequency shifts. Again, just another way to color your tone. Next we have pedal effects. This is really cool. You can actually connect other wireless controllers to the Katana Go and use those for these effects in here. So for example, if you wanted to use a wah pedal, Boss sells uh, an EV1 wireless, which is the expression volume pedal, but it operates through Bluetooth. So you could connect that to the Katana Go and select what kind of wah pedal you want to use with your tone and use that as if you would a normal wah pedal. That is, that is so, so cool. Man, like the, the things that these people have thought of is, is pretty amazing. Then we have not one, but two EQs that can be either parametric or uh, graphic style EQ. So like a, like a GE10, which is exactly what they have here. Uh, and each of these two EQs can be either pre or post amplifier. You could have it uh, EQing the sound going into the amplifier or coming out of the amplifier, which is very, very useful. Last but certainly not least, is the noise suppression. So this is the noise gate that's based on Boss's NS2. So a lot going on here. Um, let's, uh, let's hear some sounds and see how good this thing is. So I'm going to start with the first preset that I made here, which is called 80s Clean. And this is what it sounds like. So what does that sound like with all of those cool effects off? Well, let's find out. Turn off the modulation and that and that and that and both EQs. Okay, so there's no effects running. I'm on the clean amp setting with the variation switch in. Little bit of gain and this is what this sounds like. It's nice and clean. Nothing added, nothing taken away. Let's start adding these effects in one by one and see what we get. So let's throw the compressor on there. So just squashing down those peaks, uh, making it a little bit more even. Now we're gonna add the chorus because after all, this is supposed to be the 80s. Let's add a little bit of that SDE 3000 delay. And some hall reverb. Let's put those EQs on. This is going to cut out a little bit of the bottom end, add a little bit more sparkle up on top. Very, very cool. These effects sound really 
really good, especially coming out of something like as physically small as this. Something that's battery powered too. I'm really, really impressed. So in the intro, you heard what this thing sounded like crunchy. Let's, uh, let's get a lead sound going here. Here we go, Stadium Solo, this one's called. This is one is not mine, this is built into the Katanago. <laughs> So let's break here and switch over to the bass and see what that sounds like. And for bass, I'm using my Squire Classic Vibe bass. I have the EMG Geezer Butler passive pickup in here for some classic bass tones. And uh, this is just one of the uh, built-in presets here. This is called Modern Basic. Very, very cool. Not too clean, a little, little bit of hair on it, which is uh, very nice. Now, let's see what this thing sounds like when it has a bit of drive on it. And as you can see on the screen, the amp selection is slightly different. We have modern, vintage, and flat. We have a slightly different equalizer. This is all taken from the Katana bass series of amps. The effects will all be voiced more for bass on this setting. So for example, if we wanted to add some chorus here, too. The last main feature we're going to talk about today is the stage feel. This is quite an important feature, so much so that Boss has decided to give it its own dedicated button on the outside of the unit. So let me just play this patch for you and then I'm going to kick in the stage feel and see if you can tell what happens here. <laughs> most obvious thing that stands out is the reverb. So yeah, it kind of spaces it out, but there's other things going on with the EQ and a little bit of stereo widening. This is a feature that was ported over from the Boss Waza headphones, and this is called Stage Feel. What this is supposed to do is give you the feeling as if you're on stage uh, in front of an audience, right? In a nice big room with the echo, with the sense of space around it. And, you know, uh, there, there could be some debate about this. I found it much easier and much more freeing to play when I had a sense of space around my, my tone. I don't normally like a lot of reverb and delay on my sound, but this to me does a really good job of emulating through psychoacoustics like reverb and uh, widening and EQ of making my amp sound like it's behind me shooting out into this big room. And, you know, because like when you're on stage, your amp isn't in front of you. You don't stand in front of it like you do in your living room or the practice space. It's back behind you with the band. 
which is also something worth talking about. You can stream Bluetooth audio from your phone or your tablet to the Katana Go, and you can play along with songs or jam with backing tracks or whatever you like. Those can also be affected by the stage feel setting in that they'll sound like they're coming behind you and, you know, sort of like widening out into this imaginary room. And I think that's a really, really cool feature, especially considering who this is targeted towards, which is bedroom players, to give them the sense of playing on a stage. It's a very, very different experience when you're facing the audience and not your amplifier. And this goes a long way to, um, you know, to, to replicating that for, you know, a lot of us who either don't get to do that as much or who don't get to do that when we're practicing, you know? So there's a couple of settings on here. There's mode one and mode two and a custom mode. So mode one, what this does is it'll put the Bluetooth audio that's incoming from your mobile device and put that behind you and keep your amp up front and center. So this is if, as if you were in a, uh, in a, like a big rehearsal space and you're facing your amp and your band is behind you. In mode two, what you get is the band behind you and your amp behind you. And that's, I think, the most realistic setting. In the custom mode, what it does is it lets you position freely where your amp is in relation to the Bluetooth audio and position them behind you. So for somebody like me, like I was always used to having the drummer in my left ear when I was performing on stage. So that's where I would throw my backing track just a little bit more off to the left and have my amp in my right ear. Now, I think it's really thoughtful that Boss uh, includes this. It's not anything that you need to fuss with or need to worry about, but it's a great feature that it's just there for those of us who want it, for those of us who are really picky in particular. And let's face it, like some, some of us musicians just need things a certain way in order to play our best. And that's exactly what this does. That's what this stage feel uh, feature goes a long way to replicating. I think it's a really, really cool and really thoughtful addition to the Boss Katana Go. And that about wraps it up. Thank you so, so much for joining me on this video today, guys. I really appreciate you spending time with me. Uh, please like and subscribe if you dig what we're doing here. It really helps out the channel. The Boss Katana Go is available now at all Long & McQuaid locations and on our website at longandmcquaid.com. All product links will be in the description below. And uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers.